and there you are, waiting kindly for us, meow. Have you been waiting a long time, meow? Come in, come in. Even if we don't live here, even if nobody has lived here for the closest thousand years, meow. Christopher Spingler, Sarah Whitmore, and Alex enters a large room which has had a light color, where you can see an upper floor because it is open, and at the top in the middle of the ceiling, it looks like a large open flower, a large mosaic of different colors on glass of small hexagonal pieces. Considering it must be floors above, there must be strong spotlights that cast a strong glow through the glass, because that's the only light that casts many colors. The old moss-covered floor has however, also had round shapes with symbols. Not straight stairs extending from two sides, leading up to a wide balcony, under which two trees grow which with their branches grabs hold of the railing of the balcony and in the middle under the balcony, there is a staircase down to a door which has a filled esoteric star symbol, probably representing the key to be able to enter. The railing of the stairs up to the balcony is made of squiggly plant patterns that have melted a little. We haven't had time to explore all the places yet, but up there we're going. You will get lost here. When we go up the stairs, it creaks so much that it can't hold for more people than us, and the sides of the space up there have lots of things that might have been books, it may have been an esoteric library. There are many rooms up here, the borders between all the different rooms has curved or round lines at the edges, almost gothic-like with tree branches in it, and multicolored glass between the branches, those shapes that should be circular are not completely circular. Some of these, between the rooms, are sealed by a twisted quarter flower leaf pattern, with a thick glass pane that you can't see through, as if it were locked doors to rooms that have had esoteric activity. It reminds me of Art Nouveau, meow. There are oblong gothic openings to narrow passages, where the walls are broken, with a window on one wall and a broken painting on other, torn apart by large claw marks. You can't see how the floor once was but this leads to an open room. The room has a gothic high ceiling, but we are met by a kind of wall in the middle of the room which is made of five pastel blue gothic arches with four white pillars so you get a bigger arch in the middle with two smaller on the sides and the arches on the sides have multicolored glass panes. Where the pillars and arches meet there are stone lion's heads, and the pillars appear to be eaten by shells at the floor. Right in is a larger double door where the door wings over the glass of the door, like vegetation. There are other similar double doors on the sides inside the vaults, but this one in the middle is not closed. Yennefer rushes to the esoteric door in the middle and opens it to enter. We are met by two large rooms that the trees have taken over, like two tall greenhouse rooms. We enter the first directly, in the middle between these two rooms is a narrow road with gothic arches and pillars, and then comes the other room. Here is a statue among the trees, which must be the same statue Veronica found in the green maze. Has the statue moved? Is this place alive? Time to hurry up. The narrow path continues outside these greenhouses, but only on one side? The other has a strange mirror, meow. What's up with the mirror? The mirror has no reflection of us, meow. That is so, because we should go right through the mirror. Huh? What you say? Look, when I go into the mirror like this, meow. What on earth, meow? The gang goes straight into the mirror, one by one. To a mirrored version of the place, where everything seems to be the same. But where did the greenhouse go? Huh? Otherwise, the planning is exactly the same, meow. Apart from all the glass cases, meow. Very fascinating, meow. No, it's a museum with all those uh, what's uh, inside the glass cases. Several hundreds with broken long pieces of something. Here, here's something that isn't broken, meow. She picks up a crossbow-like rifle, which is partly made of brass or gold, and partly of a pink material. The metallic parts with a bold, squiggly vegetal pattern that starts at the support you put against the shoulder, 
wanders on top of a shape that gently widens out like a violin, and on the edges. There is a round shape near the trigger. Where the crossbow starts it is wider like two halves put together. And the front that is of the vegetal metallic patterned material, is also of two halves. There are four spikes at the front and the middle, and there is a scope on the thing. Beautiful and romantic. So lightweight it is. Oopsie, no ammo? Here's another one, with a strap to hang around a shoulder, but something is missing from these. It's the ammo that's missing. What's the point in taking these with you then? Ooh, check this one out. It looks like a blunderbuss. Just like a rifle with a scope, but with a trumpet at the front. The funnel is bigger, so it looks longer. And there is engraved a squiggly digital pattern all over this thing too, mostly on the brass side. Christopher Spengler studies a swollen gun to pick up Groovy. This dark purple lilac lump for a gun is so big that the trigger is inside the body. It is an angular body with a covering of a bold brass vegetal decoration. There are black spots where there would have been a magazine, or is it what hangs down under the body? There are black squares and circles along the body. Otherwise a bold vegetal decoration, mostly on the handle, but a bit clumsy. While Veronica picks up two white pistols with dark blue points along the body and a wheel above the trigger to hide behind her back. Oh, those guns look familiar. They're a little bigger than normal handguns, and you shoot smaller cannonballs with them. These two babies have a purple lilac handle with a romantic gold pattern, which continues on top and below the purple lilac hexagonal long thing that is significantly larger than usual. There is a small chain from the handle to the trigger ring, a big black circle where the magazine should be. Ha 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 back of the gun is a cat head with ears and gems representing the eyes, is watching me when I aim. A round black thing is just below the cat head. It looks like gold, this vegetal, romantic pattern. It must be brass. Shouldn't we look in the other room, meow? Sure. Yes, it's just metal junk in the other glass displays anyway. But there is a broken door over there on the opposite side of the wall with the mirror. Strange. An X next to the door. Is it meant to shut the door away? A double X, a double X with a short handle. No, it's the edge of the X that is swollen, like an imprint is with a winding pattern on the inside of the shortness, with a big M on the middle. It's too lightweight. There are large jewels hanging on a wall there, big as two hands together, like a sun. But no, you don't know whose these are. You can't just take everything you see me out. They are as big as necklaces. Oops, such a sound it made when I putted it around my neck. Meow. It's probably okay, this far after, nobody owns this place anymore. It's a lot of girly jewelry, I'll take a look at a thing meow. Let me see, they're smaller, probably fit my hand better. Oops, was it the red gem in the middle that said that? Meow. It covers the whole hand, mostly on top. Meow. The last one there, with a blue stone in it, might be good to save. Meow. Christopher Spengler opens the double doors that wind across its glass surface. <laughs> and steps out into the space that has pastel blue vaults. He moves to the narrow gothic opening which has a window on a wall and a painting on the other. Just as I suspected, the painting is not broken. Majestic, it depicts a kitty cat girl just like Pandora, but with red hair. I have to tell the rest of us meow. Really tall grass grows here. But oops, the whole room is tilted at 90 degrees. It has really tipped over and the walls are almost entirely made of broken paint. But the grass grows kind of horizontal anyway, meow. Are those flowers lupins, meow? If it's not tall grass, it's a lady's mantle, but what is under the leaves of the dew caps? Two small, silver rings with each large folded, silver flower? 
Pandora probably knows who owns this place. Yes? The Leaning Tower of Pisa has a door. We enter an open room with an old carpet on the floor, which leads to a wide mirror. It is an oval mirror with a point at the top and at the bottom, with plants of the same material as the frame, winding both outside and inside the frame, mostly at the top and on the ground. There is a decoration above the mirror, inside the decoration it becomes like a big dark red heart. The mirror takes up about a third of the wide wall. There is a marble pillar on the left and right side of the mirror, each with its own doors at the edges. It's a round dome, made of multicolored glass as roof, that casts many colors into the place. It appears to be a regular mirror, but there is a keyhole to the right of the mirror. <laughs> the mirror have a keyhole, meow. Huh? Why, meow? Who knows? An open area with a wide staircase, which leads up a bit to a narrower surface, turns off and continues up to a floor directly above. It's a similar floor up here too, but without a mirror, meow. A spiral staircase of dirty whitish stone, hidden behind an archway, continues upwards. It's a slightly smaller area up here, probably hexagonal or octagonal, with gothic columns, vaults, and a higher, more pointed roof. It means wide open. So a clear sky with a horizon becomes visible a bit below, only thick clouds are visible below as far as the eye can see. So high up we must be, I can't even see where we are, just clouds. In the middle there is a large round bowl or fountain, made of the same material as the walls, large enough that 10 people can gather around. In the center of the bowl is a glass ball, two or three times larger than a human head, which must probably stand on a small pillar. There lies an old perfume bottle under the fountain, with some pink milk in it. It's a very old model. I have a feeling that we should do what we did before. Put your finger on it. Um, huh? Um, I don't mind doing it again. It felt enjoyable in me, last time, meow. That's a good girl. Thank you. Yes, a little more force and pressure. Writing is needed for uh, you to purr and react uh, enjoying the cartoon of it. But seriously, touch the glass ball, everyone. Um. Everyone. Some of us reluctantly extends their hands to the glass ball. Everyone. Everyone puts their hands on the glass ball. Pink smoke forms in the bowl. It becomes so much that it puffs over, down over the floor. The pink cloud reaches up to the knees and slides down the stairs. Isn't the smoke a bit warmer than the air? The rooms below gets filled with a thick pink smoke like a thick fog. When the fog descends a little, the ceilings and the walls are covered with a thick pink material. It's a glossy material that covers the surface enough to hide even the cracks. It grows downwards through some ceilings, like hanging plants with flowers and hidden many lights. Now cover some ceilings. The thick clouds pour down over other larger, dark stair systems that have black details. In a pitch black room, a sea snail shaped lamp with a bent stem lit up. When the clouds have sunk away, the railings are now of a, a whitish, squiggly, hollow plant patterns. A similar massive structure is also on walls, and on round shapes like pillars. At another staircase, torches are lit at all edges that the railings have. A tree trunk grows out from the wall, which has many pink roses. There are large balls and fat crystals hanging from the ceiling, which begins to glow. Bushes quickly grow out from the walls. The pink clouds billows out of large window holes. From house complexes, where there are large funnel-shaped buildings or like mushrooms. With thick stems of a stone pattern, one on each side of the house complexes. And the large funnel-shaped buildings have forest on them, probably apple trees. 
the gothic opening in the hedge of stone with moss and flowers like a funeral bucket, becomes more opened and bigger like a clear way in, small lights sparkles in the green parts of it. The trees with the glittering purple trees, have white gothic arch complexes. So much, it's coming, meow. I think we're done up here, meow. Well, maybe there is something down there for us. Oh, now the smoke descends so you can see the stairs. The stairs are kind of white. There are flowers growing on the railing. White, red, orange, and funnels. I go down and look. Even the place below has the clouds lifted from. It hangs down from the green, over the railings. Meow. What was in the smoke? Everything is almost completely white, all the cracks are gone, and the colors are rich. It is. It looks like white uh, marble, which has a faint pink touch, glossy golden pink. There is nothing here. Let's continue down the larger staircase. What is that sound, meow? Check out the mirror. It's moving in it. Kind of floating and glowing. There's a big red light above the mirror. It's a big and fat heart in the decoration above, which has that strong light. Well, then we're going to go right into this one too, just like the last one. But it doesn't feel as nice, meow. It looks cool, meow. I'm going to try it anyway. I don't think you should. Cooling, empty space, with stars, and colorful galaxies. Calm, silence, with dim light. The mirror door, with nothing around it, slides away to nowhere. 